Hello everyone my name is Rupa Sunku and I bring to you a very unique podcast series that we have started with Touch a Life Foundation and it's called Career Elevation and I am very excited to introduce to you Aditi Surana Aditi welcome and uh, please just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about you and what you're doing today Hi Rupa thank you so much for having me on the show Now to introduce myself I work as a high performance coach and we run India's only mental gym for uh, leaders for executives for anybody who would like to really claim to become a high performer and the idea being simple most of the time mental health is looked at only when we reach a stage where we cannot manage it like anxiety or you know like difficult situations like depression but we believe that if we start working on our mental health much before uh, by doing it like a physical fitness routine if you start doing mental fitness routine you probably wouldn't hit those anxiety points easily because your mind would be stronger sharper more agile to look at the situations and your emotions would be more balanced but we are not taught on a in our regular schooling in our college education how to do that and i believe it's a key success parameter so we work uh, towards that excellent i mean that's very intriguing me being a, a psychology major from college i can absolutely relate to you because often enough i think i use my psychology knowledge even in absolutely. corporate america today and it's very useful um so thank you for that so tell me a little bit more about your education and what made you come to this uh, state of nirvana if you would like to call it <laughs> far from it rupa far from it so i feel uh, when i was 14 years old uh, something interesting happened you know how we watch all of this in the uh, marvel movies you have like a moment where suddenly the person discovers their superpower that they have so <laughs> i discovered when i was 14 i was sent by my father uh, to a personality development course and as i was sitting there the teacher said okay and we were b- bunch of teenagers there right so the teacher was trying to get us to understand that we probably don't know ourselves so she said you're going to draw zeros that i'm going to ask you to how many zeros do you think you can draw in a minute and we all came up with a number somebody said 50 somebody said 500 you know she just wanted us to know that probably you don't know your capacity gauging so that was a simple exercise she did that exercise she left the room in the break i started looking at the zeros people had made on the paper and i'm telling you i have no clue what happened in my brain i'm a dyslexic which i didn't know i was mm-hmm. at that point in time so i looked at those zeros and i started finding patterns of behavior and i'm like how is that happening but i didn't know these kids because it was not in my school it's outside so i looked at those zeros and i started telling them what kind of communication skills they have what kind wow. of behavioral patterns that they have how do they get angry how organized they are and all of us were shocked including myself because i had never done that before so i'm looking at it and i'm like oh my god this is so cool uh, and then many people came to me obviously it's a very exciting thing so i decided that this is And, and once I had experienced that, I decided I want to do my career in knowing people, in understanding them, in taking their journeys to the next level. It was like that moment of clarity. So from fourteen to eighteen, pretty much, I read a lot about psychologists, the books written by psychologists, something that was for beginners. So I was hooked since then. Uh, somebody told me about a subject called graphology where you can mathematically study people's personality by looking at their handwriting sample so that's what i picked up to and by 18 i was a professional graphologist slash counselor that's what i i worked on amazing amazing <laughs> i think you had the psychic powers of you know talking about the future and uh, proposing uh, what the personality sounds like um, i don't know about <laughs> the future but definitely personality analysis still that i can't <laughs> talk about what will happen but i can definitely tell you what kind of psychological makeup you have and that i think that decides a lot about everybody absolutely absolutely uh, you know uh, if i reflect back on my childhood my mom thought i would just be a sit at home mom just uh, <laughs> playing around with uh, things in the house and uh, i moved myself from india to the us wow. and the first thing that i went in was uh, using my psychology background 
I decided to kind of consider uh, college or school counseling, and that just didn't work my way. And now I work for a corporate company called Oracle. And even till today, I think my job is pivoted around that uh, personality, the gregarious uh, attitude, and being able to incorporate uh, those relationships, which then convert into collaborations at work. Thank so that's much. just fantastic to be able to hear uh, a similar finding. What was your mom's reaction to it? Like when she saw you being this corporate woman, what did she feel? She was so surprised and she's like, how did you end up going and working and making your way up there? I said, uh, I think it's my charm more than my uh, cleverness, uh, possibly. So that was uh, probably the reaction. So tell me a little bit about what your family environment or your ecosystem was made of. And uh, do you believe that some of the things within your family influenced your career or was it just that spark moment of the superpower as you called it that made you carve your future so i that time when i decided to do this as a career i hated to accept it but my father and his upbringing played an important like a like phenomenal role in me choosing these careers though he was the one who opposed it completely so he did not like me choosing psychology or any of the sort because he thought i would do much better as a as an engineer or as a filmmaker he said why are you doing this you know i went through this very typical indian family conflict about choosing careers which are unconventional uh, however my father has been a social worker throughout his life so i remember when i was 6 or 7 i was uh, i used to go with him and visiting um, the areas where prostitution in in bombay is mm-hmm. is prominent and uh, we used to work with the kids of the prostitutes and my father and his social worker friends would create programs for their educational and physical well being so i have always seen my father i'm getting goosebumps are even talking about <laughs> it but <laughs> my father always uh, you know thought of social reforms and we were brought up with that philosophy he read a lot so the house was filled with books a south indian house you can imagine like all the time like we at any given point in time i had more books uh, to access than my all friends put together because <laughs> that was like almost the interior of our house so that culture and constantly keeping tab of how much i you doing in a job that you have committed to so he always said that you know you should give your best no matter what happens so when when he would always you know force us to do unconventional things and i say okay give your best shot we hated it as kids my sister and i and we thought you know this can't be the case and he was a communist in his belief system so for him everybody had to receive now all these things were happening and he made us very very strong as people as women but when he saw me making a career choice like graphology or as psychology he said this is not done if you want to do something that you fancy you can leave my house and in india <laughs> it's not very conventional especially 20 years ago to ask the daughter of the house to leave the house it doesn't happen here so for me to make that choice to choose a career that i believed in uh, versus following what my father was saying must have but i think my father designed us to be that strong and i could take that call so i left my home had to support my education do do things on my own like living and all of that and thereby i had to become a professional so you know i was forced to become a professional at 18 because i didn't have any other way to make money so i jumped in and figured it out excellent excellent so it comes to my mind and i'm thinking if an 18 year old is going to come and tell me how i should change my um, approaches to be a high performer at their jobs you are talking to people of the c status or the c suite yeah. uh, and those people are obviously there not only you know aged mature older and uh, if you're talking about 20 years ago i'm thinking they were not willing to accept a woman and uh, not willing to accept somebody younger than them to come and tell them what they should do to improve or change or even accept the feedback so how did you process all of that um, in your profession so first of all uh, my key I, i i remind myself that if i'm supposed to get the first yes after 20 no's from people <laughs> 
then i will just go and get the 20 nos tomorrow that's my <laughs> principle because first two years of my career i 80% of the time i heard rejections and i kept hearing rejections and after a point you realize it's not about you they don't know you they're not rejecting you as a person they're rejecting the idea so that ability or that that attitude to digest rejection or if i have to tweak it and say expect rejection because you know mostly people going to say no if i find one person who says yes i'm just going to jump on, jump in with joy now that was a biggest shift there and that i think kept me going secondly the incessant desire to to help people i think that has never never changed in last 20 years till now if i have to look at someone's personality i blush like if i have to look at someone's <laughs> handwriting i i i'm not just it's just like a thing that happens because i'm so much in love with the craft i feel even one possibility of being able to do it is is my thing right like it's like uh, nadal saying that he wants to play that one more game before he he retires is that right. one game right so you don't want to stop playing the game so that was the excitement so no no matter how many people told you that it won't work it is not a good idea it didn't bother me to be honest um lastly when when i would approach people and talk to them about my options of you know i can analyze you blah 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 they would dismiss me because their kids were older to me most of the time <laughs> until i opened my mouth until i got a chance to talk to them about their personality and then within like first 20 minutes the game changed almost every single time so after experiencing it two three times i knew all i require is that foot in the door and the ability to look at their personality and comment and then i just went for that perfect perfect so it's almost your passion has driven your career pathing to uh, fruition right so tell me if uh, i were to ask you to go back to your 20 years old self when you started in this profession would you have done something differently to change your path or do you believe you set your foot in motion and have the right path and you've never thought back to change it but obviously refine it and make it even more better and more convenient and more marketable uh, overall so one thing i i think and now now that my father is no more i think that i wish i would have made multiple attempts to convince him about my career i made one or two attempts and then i found my path and i do feel that we missed those 5 6 years that he did not speak with me in that period so that one thing i would change because having my father celebrate every victory that i went through or every you know achievement mm-hmm. milestone would have been nicer but that was my path so i chose one uh, secondly i i feel that psychology or or in generally self reflection is not looked at as a as a common thing like if we study yoga sutra it talks a lot about swadhyay which is study of the self and also studying by yourself so yoga sutra speaks a lot but people do yoga and they do not ever pay attention <laughs> to the philosophy behind it but we even being indians we do not pay attention to that whole idea we constantly focus on the results and how we were going to get through things we don't focus on the process so i feel if i would have had 20 years to do something i would have spoken a lot more about process than only personality only outcome i think i did that for first 10 years until i realized that no no something is going off here and we should be really more focused on the process of building people so that one thing i feel i would have changed okay um and you talk about having to leave the house which was a rough start for you but obviously something that you made that a uh, power element uh, to sustain overall uh do you believe that made you stronger you know having those falls uh within a controlled environment because i'm sure your parents were still looking out for you and there was that support system so do you believe that you would do differently if uh, the support system didn't exist or uh, you were not uh, mentally trained to take on challenges and uh, uphold uh, your passions so i do not think the support support system existed because my father decided okay. to completely cut off so financially emotionally socially i i was like outcast and in many ways when i look back that actually did well because that was my first professional stint if i may say and that was the toughest one ever 
so that trained me to to really test my passion test how much i want to do this and after that uh, pretty much for last 15 16 years things have become difficult obviously running a business running a team you have challenges every other day but at the end of the day i am so okay walking away from anything that i would not feel bogged down by things after a point so this was a big lesson because when you begin with like leaving everything that you know and you realize then you are not scared so most most entrepreneurs talk about risk taking and constantly worrying about what if they lose the business that they built i feel that worry i do not have and thanks to my father i think all the training that we went through with him uh, because he wouldn't make us uncomfortable all the time like we would be my sister and i would be taken to a public speaking lecture or like uh, some some you know authoritative person talking about their views and he would hand over the mic to us and say ask a question to this expert <laughs> and we were like eight or ten, and we would be like all scared to do that. But after, and then next session, we would like think and make our notes because we knew we would be thrown into a situation like that. But constantly doing this made us so clear about what we think and how we look at situations. And he he appreciated us for all the views. So yeah. Until it's been, until that day, <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. You talk about asking those questions. In fact, uh, most of the time during uh, general big large meetings, I always force my team to say, "You're not going to walk out of that uh, meeting room without asking one question." And mm-hmm. it's about making that presence be felt, especially today in the hybrid world. Yep. in the remote uh, scenarios you're not making those connections mm. and it's so important to make your presence felt and just because you hold the mic you don't ask something silly you need to be constructive and thoughtful about what you ask so this has been fantastic so i want to ask my last question of you and that is you have taken the unconventional career path become an entrepreneur by default or by circumstance and uh, what would you like to say out there to all our listeners who are probably carving out their careers or wanting to make shifts within their careers uh, overall so being a passion entrepreneur i would say a uh, passion does not make it easy most of the time people think that oh i'm passionate about it and I, i hear people say oh you won't have a single day of stress if you love what you do that's not true mm-hmm. like you will have to deal with a lot of stress because business running like conducting a business or you can actually doing things which are unconventional will always have the resistance that you will have to face but the beauty is when you look at that situation when you try to understand what do you need to do so you will have more moments of falling in love with your career over and over and over again so that is something that you have to keep in mind so it's not easy but it is simple and it's more fulfilling at the end of the day and so many times when the going gets tougher i remind myself why i chose this career mm-hmm. and this really helps like constantly connecting with okay that one person who i can make a difference to or that one life that i can shift i think that's more than enough so i for me that simple idea i think emily dickinson says this that uh, if i can stop one heart from be- breaking my life is not in vain and i really like that line if if you that one moment that you can make a shift to someone's life if that matters to you whatever in your profession whatever you know is your passion but keep that why simple and repeat it to yourself every other day because that is the only reason why you would do unconventional stuff excellent excellent thank you so much for those inspiring career journey a uh, life journey and uh, the simplicity of your message but yet so powerful i'd like to thank you once again and you, uh, uh, to all of the listeners Uh, touch a life foundation brings you the career elevation podcast please tune in and listen to each one of these inspiring people that i'll be talking to thank you aditi thank you rupa thank you so much for having me